Do you use PFSense or OpenSense in your home network, your your home lab? If you do, are you following these best practices? Okay, so I've got a list of five best practices. I I hate best practice lists. I'm sorry, I do. Best practices was one of those things that in my day job would get thrown around so often in the name of not doing something that the person using the best practices umbrella wanted to do. Hope that makes sense. So let, let's take a look at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not calling it best practices anymore. Let's not use that. Let's let's say top tips. I think that would be easier. Yeah, let's call it top tips. Make sure your stuff is up to date. So do you use PFSense or OpenSense? Personally, at the moment, and I, I might change that. I use PFSense. I might change to OpenSense. There's been a lot of work done recently on OpenSense to get things like snapshots with the help of various content creators. Yeah, so content creators like uh, Sherilyn Computers, Sam, he's re released a few plugins, open source plugins for OpenSense to, to bring snapshots. And uh, there was one for a, a particular VPN setup. I don't remember which one it was at the time. I think it might have been Tailscale. I'm not sure. Check him out, a link in the description below. That was always the one thing that kept me away from OpenSense was that there was no native snapshots for the, the community version. There is now with this plugin, thanks to Sam. So my number five top tip would be, stay on top of your updates. And it's very, very simple. Create a snapshot so you've got one of it working. Do the update, reboot, see if it works. If not, boot into the previous snapshot and try again and so on and so on. In my PF Sense, I find that very simple. So in, in my PF Sense system update, now I am running the PF Sense Plus and I know that I'm on the beta version and there is an update. It's been a long time since there's been one, so I'll probably run that update in a little while. Yeah, it's been a month. So as you can see, I've got a boot environment there, 24.11 in use. This will move me up to 2503 so i will do that and yeah make sure you're keeping up to date and that includes any of your packages or your plugins just keep it regularly updated doesn't have to be every day that, that's just probably putting a lot of stress on you to do it every day some people will some people won't probably the the frequency that makes most sense is weekly probably that's probably what i would do personally i do do it every day but if I didn't have that kind of time, I would do it once a week. Back up your config files. Another easy one that probably doesn't really need saying, but for some reason it does, is back up your config. You know, finding that you've done something and you can't remember what it was, and then you have to start from scratch. Nobody wants to do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. It just, it makes no sense. So make sure you do good backups of your config. And it's very simple to do in, in PFSense and, and, and in OpenSense. So I can show you how to do it on PFSense because I'm running that. And there you go. Diagnostics, backup and restore. There's your backup configuration. And just run it. You can probably do it as a cron cron job. And then just download the XML wherever you've 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 done it it's, it's no big deal and then you can restore the backup easily enough there in, in the section below and reinstall packages very simple again probably very simple on OpenSense, but you don't want to be caught short and have to restart everything from scratch and it's just a nightmare i've done it a few times and it, it's just not fun create a management vlan number three use a dedicated management vlan where possible. Assuming that your home network and most home labbers will, maybe most tinkerers that have a, a home network might not unless they're using specific switches, which can muddy the waters. If you're not using switches that have VLANs, it's probably not a great idea to, to start setting up 
VLANs if you can't set up your switches properly. That way you've got a dedicated management port on your firewall. I don't do this because the devices that are on my network I trust for the most part. Security cameras, maybe not so trustworthy. Alexa, that kind of thing. I, I use that very sparring, sparingly anyway, so not a huge deal for me. But if you can, it's worth doing it. It's something I might look into because my switches do support VLANs. Never actually gotten it to work on those switches, but I might give it another go at some point. Stick around for that one. That'll be a fun thing to dismantle my network and then reset it up. <laughs> Restrict internal access to your firewall. Number two, restrict internal network access. Only trusted computers should be able to log into my firewall. As I said just now, while this is a good idea in practice, in theory, in practice, it can be a bit <laughs> impractical. I tend not to do this because, as I said, most of the devices on my network are trustworthy. So you can restrict it by MAC address or IP address. Fairly simple in PFSense. I would imagine it's fairly simple in OpenSense as they are a clone of, as it's a clone of PFSense. But like I said, I don't really do that. I mean, you could even turn it off and just use the console if you really wanted. Makes things slightly more complicated. But if you're used to FreeBSD, as I am, it's not actually that bad. Something to think about. What was that number two? Okay, so let's think about... Restrict actions to admin consoles. Number one. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the next one, with the previous one anyway. And that's ensuring restricted admin access. What do I mean by that? I mean, you don't need access outside, outside of your LAN. If you do, set up a VPN, that's the best way to do it. But restrict access to SSH. With SSH, you've got the control to do absolutely everything everything you, you could possibly want to do, including wipe the contents of the disk. You don't want people to be able to do that if they can get to it. So restrict it. So that is my, my list of top five things to do, top tips on your firewall for any home labber. Now, take all this with a pinch of salt. This list suits my needs rather than anybody else's and and things that i've looked into and if you have your own best practices by all means go by them and a little bonus one try and keep as many as little amount of firewall rules as you possibly can makes debugging it so much easier just my uh, two penneth worth and of course if you don't want to follow this list you don't have to. No one's uh, holding your ransom to it. If you have your own best practices, please sound off in the comments. I'd be quite interested to hear what you guys do in keeping your network secure. I think that'll do it for today. I'm going to go off and do a few other things. As always, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, a whole lot. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.